All right, we will get into it. Let me get my PowerPoint back up. Whoop, I had it up. Here we go. By the way, to get let's uh let's get some motivation going here. First of all, I'll pray for joy. That, that don't sound good, Joy. Uh hope you get to feeling better. Again, how about a big round of applause for everybody that posted in that group? Did that not shock y'all? That was fabulous. I think Cindy's already, uh, Lisa, Cindy's carrying the torch around that we need to do that again next week, and I agree. Don't y'all think? Y'all want to do it again next week? Let's set up another group challenge for next week. You probably already have, but let's go on and set that up, and let's do it again. It helped, it helped me. It held me accountable. It held me accountable. I like the interaction that it caused, um, whether it was a written, inter uh, obviously it was written interaction, but I know there's a little group of us up here. And so in the chat, it was real like, oh my gosh, did you see, you know, kind of thing. So it was really good uh, for those members that are just now coming back uh, or those that have been on the sidelines for a while. And uh, I understand being on the sideline and, uh, you know, just to have that interaction again, just the enthusiasm that I feel on that page uh, brings back some great fond memories of the enthusiasm that we've uh, certainly experienced in the past. Yeah, absolutely. And don't forget, Cindy's been, Cindy Norgate's been carrying the blow tor the torch for our Shibboleth community. If you're not on Facebook, feel free to post in there too. Uh, we have a Shibboleth community. It works very much like Facebook. Most people are not aware of that, but those that are not on Facebook, that community, I actually need to do, do a tour of that. It's a great way to get better prioritized support, and we can keep things more positive. We built in algorithms to keep out negativity, so it's pretty cool. We just need to spend more time on it. Probably, probably need an app, but it's going to be a while before I can re-engage with our app developer. Uh, but it it's pretty cool. It's It works pretty good. Our community does. Really safe place, um, positive place. Unlike Facebook, you're not going to get ads. You're not going to get junk. It helps you focus on your, what, your experience, your weight loss and wellness experience. Kind of like going from uh, planet to planet. So anytime you need a positive interjection, there's just not quite enough going on there for people to spend more time, but we won't ever have enough going on there if we don't do what Cindy's suggesting and, and move over to that. At some point, that's the only place that I'll be supporting our members if things go as planned. Because uh, again, I'll be able to do a lot better work if I'm not flying around on Facebook all day looking for all the, the the things yelling at me. I can just go look and prioritize way at, at who's needing help. So um, that'll be awesome. But we got to get there one one day at a time. But that's so Cindy. can we post that's our what, pictures there? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. sure. Yeah, right. you, if you want to do both, it might take a little more. But that's one way because we don't want to see the Facebook group with all that. That's where everybody's at. That's basically the the town hall right now. Um, so uh, we don't want to remove that or, or see a deterioration of it. But if you have time and want to post in our community, that's great. Hey, Travis, I just want to say and second what Cindy Walter said. I really enjoyed this past week posting. It gave me lots of motivation. I had one of the best weeks I've had in five years. So mm -hmm. it was really great. Praise the Lord. That that was really good to see. It was encouraging to me too, just yeah. to see all that liveliness. Exactly. Anybody else? All right. We'll, we're going to pull up our PowerPoint and get this party started. So Lisa, again, has put us together some recipes and I'm taking, uh, I haven't done any rehearsal. We don't know what we're going to get into, but We'll show you the mind of a fool. <laughs> and I <laughs> I say that because a Bible verse came to my mind. It says, suffer fools gladly. So y'all just have to suffer me. But uh, baked potato soup, baked potato soup. This one is sent in by Peggy Anderson. 
again, this goes with, with what I've been saying for years. Why? I, don't, I won't get on my soapbox for long. Why in the world would you not do Shibboleth? Why in the world when there's nothing you can't have with a few swaps? Most every ingredient that you would swap to is going to be found at your local grocery store. The difference is not just losing body fat. It's a longer life because you're controlling the chemical messengers that go into the body. So uh, baked potato soup, normally you're, you're talking carbohydrate, you're talking fat. Well, let's see if we can fix it. So ingredients, one and a half cups of country style peppered gravy mix. Anybody see a problem there? It's not a problem. Most mix packs are gonna be fine. Look at the calories, make sure they're negligible. Um, 25 or less is gonna be negligible when it comes to a, a spice pack, a seasoning pack, anything like a, the ranch dressing mix, anything like that. The powder stuff that gives the, the actual gravy, the flavor uh, is going to be uh, very low calorie. So we've got a gravy mix. Water is not a problem. But now we've got potatoes and we've got one and a half cups of reduced fat cheddar cheese. All right, so gravy mix, not a problem. I've got potatoes. What category are potatoes? They're a category three. <clears throat> so, so far, I don't have anything here but a category three. I'm adding cheese and it's reduced fat cheese. Now I've, now I've added a four to a three. Do you see that? So reduced fat cheese is gonna be a condiment or a category four. At one and a half cups, I'm thinking that's enough that that could cause a problem. Now, I will come back in a minute and tell you how I would fix it just using this recipe, but, but hold off. We, we wanna make this recipe better. If you can find fat-free cheese, we're still safe here because then we've got a one and a three together. But if I use the reduced fat, it's still pretty fatty. I might have a problem. What are some things that I could do if I can't find reduced fat? Well, you might could consider radishes in place of your potatoes. You might want to consider, I don't know how the flavor would end up being, but um, butternut squash, not, yeah, butternut squash. So radishes or butternut squash in place of the potatoes would fix this. I don't know how the recipe would turn out. Uh, some of you have been using radishes as a potato replacement. So you might, you might get away with that here uh, from a taste perspective because you're using the gravy to flavor the recipe and you've got the cheese. Absolutely, if you wanted to use turnips, if you wanted to lose, if you wanted to use jicama, fantastic. So right here, we would say in the recipe, at recipe, to get a negative three, negative two recipe, we would need to replace the potatoes with either radishes, jicama, butternut squash, or turnips. Then we're we're straight here. We would be okay so far. If I want to use regular potatoes, then I'm going to have to find some fat-free cheese. Does that make sense, everybody, so far? Let's look at, let me finish and look at the instructions. There's going to be something sneaky in here. I can feel it. We've got our gravy mix package, whipping it, six cups of water with potatoes, Boil for five minutes, everything's staying the same. There's no add-ons here. When cheese has melted, remove, heat, and serve. Okay. Here would be how I would do this. If I'm not willing to change out the potatoes and I can't find fat-free cheese, I would use the reduced fat cheese. I would leave the recipe as it is. 
except for I would reduce the cheese to three quarters of a cup. I want to really back down on that fat. So I'm reducing it to three because this, this is going to serve several people. So it wouldn't be much per serving at three quarters of a cup if I just wanted to keep the recipe as it is. Now, we could use Cindy's, I forget the name of it now, the Lifetime Fat-Free Cheese. That would be exceptional for this recipe, Lisa. Everybody, what was that called? Lifeline or something, Cindy? Lifewise. Lifewise fat-free cheese. That's a hunk cheese. It's fat-free. Then we're good to go here. Then this would just be a category three. That's how we would use it. I would make sure that I add, whether I leave the recipe as it is, with the reduction of the reduced fat cheese, if this would be a side item, I would count it as a category two plus three and add uh, like four to six ounces of chicken breast or some other lean meat. So I would have my side of chicken breast and my side of potato soup. We got to get the protein in there. And there's no category two in here. I'm just trying to make my combos right. The category three we need to keep it at around 20 grams of carbs, and I got to get the protein up above 20 to slow down the blood sugar impact. That's going to be pretty easy to do if I just count this as a side item, reducing the amount of cheese, and then have four to six ounces of lean meat with it that's prepared in MCT oil or just grilled. Do not, whatever you do, do not add any full any long chain triglyceride to this recipe. Don't add any um, vegetable oil, any regular butter. Don't add anything like that, or you'll get this in trouble. But it's a decent little side item with a lean protein. Sweet potatoes would work. You could use sweet potatoes. Lifewise cheese, as I understand it, Kathy, is somewhere online. The ladies have found a place online to get Lifewise fat-free cheese. I know that you can also find it at Ingles, but you might I might have to defer to the ladies. I haven't had time to find it and shop for it, but I will be. It used, yeah, to, be called, it used to be called Lifetime. Now it's Lifewise. It's very good. Tastes like hunk cheese. Tastes like full fat cheese with no fat. Does everybody get that? That sounded like a lot. Does everybody understand how we would change this? You too, Lisa. I know I threw a lot at you. You may have some questions. There's a lot of different things we could do to make this manageable. But I want to make sure we're all clear on it because I threw a lot at you. If we're looking for the most optimal thing to do, we're using a potato replacement. You could turn this into exercise in a bowl. If you replace the potatoes with one of the aforementioned foods and you had the LifeWise fat-free cheese, you just turn this into blowtorch in a bowl. And I bet it tastes just as good. Did that make sense? So you, we basically took one recipe and made three out of it. <laughs> Depending on the weight loss meter that you want to go by. Any questions or comments about that? Y'all are good with that one? Again, thank you, Peggy, for contributing that one. Everything else looks good. Now let's take a look at chocolate protein mug cake by Tasha Hale. If that's Tasha, let me know. Tasha Hale. All right, so ingredients. We've got a quarter cup of an approved chocolate or vanilla protein powder. Perfect. We got coconut misspelled. Lisa just heads up there. Uh, coconut flour is fine. Also, any of our other approved flours would be fine for this. Coconut flour is absolutely perfect. Stevia or monk fruit 
would be the replacement. Stevia or monk fruit, baking powder is fine. Cocoa powder is fine. Egg whites are fine. No skim milk. Can't have skim milk. What would we use? Skim milk is loaded in sugar. Loaded. So what would we replace that skim milk with? Yes, Kroger Carmaster milk, fat-free Fairlife milk, or unsweetened almond milk. Everybody good with that? Then we've got Hershey's, mm, sugar-free chocolate chips. Did I miss anything there? How's that sounding to everybody? Pretty good one, looks good, sounds good. We've got our mug set aside, our mixing bowl, whisking our egg whites with our approved milk. We're good. Everything's good there. No problem there. We got a great, if it's over 200 calories, I, I don't know. I'm guessing it's under 200 calories per serving. You got a snack episode. If over 200, a meal episode. Good job. Healthy Drunken Noodles. I like noodles by Kathy Snyder. Let's take a look at this one. All right, we got a robust one. We've got Miracle Noodles are fine. Chicken is fine. MCT oil, this one looks already worked on. Pepper, jalapeno, all that's good. Onions, good. Bell peppers, good. Shredded carrots, Green onions, basil, low sodium soy, oyster sauce, fish sauce, one tablespoon of water. Does anybody so far, before we get into the instructions, does anybody see a problem there? I don't see anything. I see that we can make some things better. We can make, uh, we could change the soy sauce out for Bragg's liquid amino, but I'm not even worried about that. It's not enough benefit to even worry with it unless you want to. Bragg's liquid amino is a replacement for soy sauce. I'm not, like if I like, see I like everything about this recipe, but I may not eat it very often because of the miracle noodles. So we could change out the miracle noodles for any of the approved pastas, and this would still count as a one Two, okay, so we got a meal that's a one, what's better for weight loss? A one plus two or a one plus two plus three? One plus two. If I leave it as it is, it's a one plus two. So we've got basically a negative three weight loss meter here. You've basically got a negative three weight loss meter. If we leave it alone. If I use carbonata pasta, I've got a zero weight loss meter. That's a one plus two plus three. If I use Explore Cuisine pasta, I've got a negative two recipe here. Mung bean pasta would go great here. If I use any of the fiber gourmet pastas, the penny pasta, they've got the same looking kind of fettuccine noodles. They've got the same stuff. If I use fiber gourmet, I've got a negative one. Did that make sense, everyone? Depending on the taste, and because see, I would look at this and go, it looks great, but I don't love Miracle. I love, I like the Miracle Rice in some things, but the long strands of pasta, the Miracle Noodles, I have a hard time with those. I have to have the rice texture. So I could certainly use Miracle Rice or rice cauliflower or something like that here. But if I'm wanting the pasta texture, I'm switching this out from mung bean pasta and still getting a good negative two. It's better with the Miracle Noodles. Lee's asking why not the Miracle Noodles. I'm just, I don't love to eat them, eat them. 
there, there, no, there's no nutritive value, which is great because it's zero. You, you're getting no calories. That's why it's a negative three. It's not the nutritive value. Like if you are okay with miracle noodles, you should go with miracle noodles because that keeps this at a negative three. Does that make sense, everybody? I, I just, some things I'm okay with, with miracle noodles or rice and some things not. When it's a pasta heavy dish, I'm eating that to enjoy it. And I'm only, I'm going to be using mung bean or fiber, uh, fiber gourmet, but I might reduce the portion because fiber gourmet, you have to be careful with. It's kind of like carbonata. It, let me know if that makes sense. Lindsay's asking, what about skinny pasta? I don't know what that is. If somebody will put the link, I'll look it up. I'm not familiar with anything called skinny pasta. I may have been in the past, but if I don't eat it a lot, I forget what we've talked about. There's so many options. But I'm happy to look at skinny pasta. I just don't know what we're, what it is off the top of my head. Any questions or comments about this one so far? This is something I would do. Let me make sure there's nothing funky in the instructions. Nope, nothing funky. Beautiful recipe. Mom, can we do this one? Can we try this one? This is right up my alley here. That looks beautiful. Let me pause. Y'all are sure quiet. Everybody good with that so far? Did that make sense? That's something I, I love pasta. You just have to be careful with pasta because it can cause some fluid retention. All right, y'all are quiet. I'm gonna move on. Instant pot chicken lentil, chili with butternut squash by Susan. Instant pot chicken lentil, chili with butternut squash. This is something I would like. Onion, carrots, bell pepper, chicken breast, butternut squash. So I've got category three or condiment. Category two, category one, category two, salsa, freebie, dry lentils, a category six, garlic and celery. So I've got a one, two, six. Anybody see a problem with a one, two, six? I don't, I don't see any trouble here. This is another one that somebody's worked on that already looks and sounds great. I'm using cinnamon, cocoa, chili powder, cumin, coriander, dry mustard, oregano, cayenne, good. Chicken stock. All right, for our chicken stock, we need to switch that out, don't we? What are we going to what are we going to switch that chicken stock out to? Yeah, you could use bone broth. You could use zero fat bone broth. Uh, but you could use fat free chicken broth. Fat free chicken broth. It would taste better with some kettle and fire bone broth in there, though. Uh, but fat free chicken broth would be your, your go to replacement. Cheryl asked a question. Did I understand you to say fiber gourmet is slightly better than carbonata? No, I don't mind repeating it all. Let me, off the top of my head, give you the, the ranking of pasta. Are y'all ready? This might help you. Anytime it's a pasta called for, here's my go-tos depending on my goals. So first priority, if something's calling for a noodle, I go with rice cauliflower or spiraled zucchini or butternut uh, spaghetti squash if you got it and have the time and inclination to do it, any category two veg vegetable spirals or rice cauliflower or miracle noodles or miracle rice, that's your best weight loss options. 
Did that make sense? That's your ranking there. That'd be a good little short video I can do. So you got your ranking. The, that's your first go-to if your primary concern is weight loss. Next would be your Explore Cuisine Pastas. Black, black bean or mung bean. That's going to keep your pasta dishes ranking really well on the weight loss meter. Next would be your fiber gourmet pasta. Last would be your carbonata pasta. They all work. But usually, like if we were ranking the weight loss meter, carbonata zero won't help you but won't hurt you if you stay within the portion guidelines. And the, the, the worst, not the worst, but the higher the weight loss meter, meaning zero is higher than negative three, the higher the weight loss meter, the more important it is to dial back the portion of your carbohydrate and fruit. So zero, we're talking um, carbonata, Negative one, fiber gourmet. Negative two, explore cuisine. Negative three, all the, the first mentioned ones. Did that help? Bullion cubes work. Yeah. Bullion cubes do work. Yeah, that's my version of good, better, best for the pasta. Uh, the I, I like the Explore Cuisine pasta because they're very high in protein. Whereas your negative three, so let me let me give you more information there. If I've just if I'm a vegan or vegetarian or trying to eat a plant based food, then I got to go with Explore Cuisine because otherwise you're not going to get your protein. There's no protein in Miracle Noodles or vegetable spirals. But there's a lot of protein in Explore Cuisine pasta. So I can have a pasta dish that's a one plus two. I don't see anything in here. Of course, Lisa will do a wonderful job. And Lisa, the only thing I see is to say add fat-free chicken stock or kettle and fire zero fat bone broth. Got a great little dish there. Any questions on that one? Looks good. Sounds good. Deliciousness. Cheesy garlic breadsticks. Uh-oh! By Penny Bentley. Well, that, whew. I started sweating until I seen Penny's name on there. I started sweating like, may not be able to fix this one. But if I know Penny, it's already fixed. How about a shout out for Penny again? She's just doing a great job. All right, let's take a look. A cup of shredded fat-free mozzarella, a cup of shredded Parmesan, one whole egg, garlic powder, dried Italian herbs. So far, so good. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Combine all ingredients until well incorporated. Place the mixture into parchment. She nailed it. There's nothing wrong with any of this. This is going to be a pizza crust we're eating. When are we doing this? What an idea. Invite me over somebody. Let's have that to eat. Yes, what a replacement. Because if I eat, if I order those from Pizza Hut, I got a problem. My butt ain't seeing no EFB in two days if I eat that. But with this, I don't miss a beat. Listen to this. Listen to what she's done. I've got nothing in here but beautiful blowtorch foods. I'm basically having cheesy bread sticks that are a category four. That's all I'm having. Awesome job. Can't wait to try this. Nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Beautiful. Let's call this one, Lisa. It's a negative one. 
cheesy breadsticks that's a negative one. Keep in mind, you got to watch your portion if you're going to have them as an appetizer. Think through your bulletproof shield. Three eating episodes a day are best. So how would this look for me if I wanted these tonight? I'm probably having my cup of Four Sigmatic coffee in the morning. I'm going to have me some zip to keep my appetite low. Then I might have me a, a little bowl of Kettle and Fire bone broth. I'm paying it forward. Now I've only had one eating episode and it was light. That way at night, I can, let's say, for example, order me a cauliflower crust pizza, eat me two slices of pizza, but before I eat the pizza, I could have the breadsticks. Now I've had three eating episodes. Did that make sense, everybody? Three eating episodes that are approved in portion control is fast fat loss. Did that make sense? Ashley, how how we get that pizza recipe? <laughs> it, it, it'll be in your library when Lisa gets to it. Ashley, what we're doing here is taking recipes and fixing them. We're Shibola proving them. This is our We Fixed It class. And uh, we're going through recipes and converting them. And then they get added to our amazing library. And that's it. What a day today. Look at all that we accomplished. We got baked potato soup. We've got chocolate protein mug cake. We've got drunken noodles. Packy mouth. Packy mouth. Packy mouth. We've got instant pot chicken lentil chili with butternut squash and cheesy garlic breadsticks. What a day. What a day. I could turn that into a week-long challenge and lose two to five pounds that week just eating off that menu right there. I don't, I love pizza, but I don't eat it. I don't want to burn the fat bus. Well, as long as you eat approved, and, and you can make a homemade pizza, if you'll find you some Joseph's high-fiber flatbread, that makes the best pizza. Or you could use your, my mom last night had zero carbohydrate uh, tortillas. You can make a pizza with those that's, that will burn fat. That's the thing, Miss Ashley. Learning how to make those swaps, you can take something that causes crazy fat gain and turn it into something that even causes fat loss. It's just learning the system. Anybody else? Could we use that as a pizza crust? You certainly could. So, Jody, if you took that and then you added uh, just some pizza, some pizza paste, and you added your approved pepperoni, approved ground beef. Oh, yes. I'm going to be trying that. I see several. I'm going to be trying, especially these breadsticks. I love breadsticks, and I haven't had them in years because it's never worth it. Now they are. They're going to be satisfying. They're going to be filling because of the ingredients. Anybody else? Where can you order a pizza? Well, you got to check around. I have a place in Cartersville. If anybody's close to Cartersville, Nina's is where I go. Nina's. Nina's has thin cauliflower crust pizza. And I eat two slices, but you got to manage it. If you eat more than two slices, you're not, you're not seeing no EFB for a while. So I have two slices of Nina's pizza on a thin cauliflower crust. Uh, you'd have to do your research and make sure that they're, I ask questions. What is the carbohydrate on the cauliflower crust? Uh, if they can't tell you that, you might want to avoid it. But when in doubt, cauliflower crust, and then you, you, you follow the pizza rules. We have pizza rules, lifestyle pizza rules. Awesome, Ashley. Good job. Way to be creative. Me too, Mom. Me too. I want that too. 
Anybody else? Have you enjoyed the class? Hey, Travis, I have a question about something somebody made in comments, I think, on last Saturday's class. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with um, making like a jello fluff type thing with the cottage cheese, the sugar free jello, and the sugar free cool whip. Okay. Um, I see there's something in resources. Um, I think it was like a strawberry fluff or something like that that was very similar. Um, but how would you ever want to add just a sprinkling of nuts to something like that? Or uh, I'd have to see it. We'd have to see the carb. Nuts are high in fat. It would depend on the carbohydrate. But if you're just using a little little palmful for texture, it's not going to be a problem. Okay. I mean, is that kind of a good little side dish if you hanker for something sweet or a little dessert to have maybe a half a cup or so of something like that with the sugar-free Jello, Cool Whip, and low-fat cottage cheese? As long, as long as you're understanding how you look at the program. So if, if your view of the program is like my view of the program, then it probably is okay. And what I mean by that is we have to stop grazing. So the way I do it, I have to be a little more, a little bit more of a planner than when I started the program. I know for a fact, if you go beyond any three Shibboleth approved recipes in a day or approved meals or any anything, if you go beyond any three eating episodes and you're within 30 pounds of your goal weight, you're not gonna lose any weight. It's just not gonna happen. Not consistently. So the way I look at it is everything that I put in my mouth needs to control insulin. And if it's controlling insulin and I limit my eating episodes to three or less a day, I'm going to be okay. So I have to think if I know in the evening, I'm going to want more. I'm going to want that dessert. I'm going to want something sweet after my meal then I have to have some eating episodes left. That's why I'm a big faster during the day. It isn't just all of the main, the amazing benefits we get from fasting. It's I know myself and I know after dinner, I'm going to want something sweet. An example would be like eating at mom's last night. I had a taco and a salad. That was one meal. That was one eating episode. It wasn't two because of the portion. I didn't have a big salad. I didn't have many tacos. I had a little taco and I had a salad. Are y'all with me? That was one eating episode. So I wanted something sweet. So I wanted mom's approved chocolate chip cookies. So I had two eating episodes. If you're treating it like an eating episode and it's approved in controlling insulin, you're fine. So I look at each day like I have a, I have rations. I have three eating episodes. Do I want to use them all? Now, I can use a fourth, but I'm not losing no weight. So you can have the, the worst it should ever get from a portion standpoint would be three meal episodes and one snack episode and freebies if I'm in a, if I'm in a jam mentally. So what you're saying is I'll, if I understand you, after I eat, I want something sweet. You need to count it as two eating episodes. Now, earlier in the day, did you eat breakfast? Did you eat lunch? Were those meals? Then you eat a third, you eat dinner. And now can you have the fluffer nutter as a snack? You can. You can do that. That's four. But I made that decision to do that. Therefore, I know the scales probably aren't going to be kind to me if I'm looking for uh, my scale, my bathroom scales to show uh, me losing weight. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, that helps. I, I try to say, unless I'm famished or feeling weak, I try not to eat during the day. That way at night, I can have two eating episodes. I can have my dinner and I can have my snack and I'm good. I'm happy with that. But most people, when you start out in the beginning, I felt that I needed three meals of snack and freebies but I was also over 300 pounds. Then when I hit a plateau, I just couldn't break through. So I had to start eliminating calories and finding better ways to do the program the closer I got to go. 
But you have to also, it's, it isn't that your body's calling for the nutritive value of the fluffer nutter. It's a mental thing. And I have them too. And, and that's when we have to stop and we have to get our, our, uh, our balancing scales out that's in our mind. And we have to go, okay, how much do I want this extra eating episode because I'm craving something sweet or salty? I'm satisfied. I'm full. My stomach's only that big and I've just eat that much food, but I really am craving something. It's like last night. I would have been better not to have eaten those chocolate chip cookies from a weight loss perspective, but I would have sit there and the pain of that void might've been so great that it what, you know, that wasn't worth it. So I did have my chocolate chip cookies, but when I look out throughout the day, I only had two eating episodes throughout the whole day. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I was satisfied. I was very satisfied with that. Yeah, oh. my normal go-to at night if I get the snacks around eight o'clock is like one of the 50 calorie chocolate peanut butter patties with my hot tea and mellow out. Yeah. But I try to keep, stay away from that, but that's usually my normal go-to if I'm looking for a little, just a little something. Yeah, and, and, and here's the difference with our snacks versus how I used to snack. So if I had been my old self, I would have went and got the Oreos out I would have went and got the skim milk out. I would have plunged my Oreos in the skim milk or the whole milk, and I would eat a column, column of those. Then, because of all those chemical messengers, my insulin would be through the roof. My stomach would actually be hurting. It would actually be stretched, but my brain would still be calling for more food because of it, that insulin messenger. But by eating something like mom's GC control cookies, appetite gone you can't even eat that many of them because the chemical messengers were up oh, we're keeping insulin at bay and we're going to increase our leptin levels because of the ingredients here and you're not going to be hungry and if you eat too much more you get sick because the leptin levels are so high it's your body saying i don't want no more i'm satisfied so it's even even swapping even if i'm having a holiday if I swap to our approved snacks, I'm not going to be able to eat as many calories. Just a fact. Gotcha. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? When making shibby biscuits, can fiber wise be used in place of the fiber gourmet? It can. It leaves them a little. It it leaves them a little little uh, coarse and dry. I would consider probably a blend, either five, uh, half and half. If you don't have fiber gourmet, keep some Bob's Red Mill low carb uh, bacon flour. Keep some of that on hand or keep some almond flour on hand. And those are going to be higher calorie. But what we can do is do a one to one ratio of fiber wise. It, you can try it, but sometimes they're a little dried out. I just have to experiment with that to know. I don't want you to have to waste the money. I waste so much money having to experiment. But once I've got it, I've got it. Uh, and I've used that in a lot of the uh, Bob Bob's Red Mill stuff, but I haven't tried it with the Shibby Biscuits. So experimental thing. But you, it is a, a better option for you a cleaner option than the fiber gourmet so you might want to try to switch and then you might want to work on adding some things to moisten them some it'd be better for you from a weight loss perspective not much but a little may i yes uh gail 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 not gail martin gail oh johnson. gosh maybe gail johnson you Gail Johnson. She put out she's a couple of times this week pictures of the Shibby biscuits. And if you'll go somebody if you're interested in them, go through her post because there's people asking about. I know Missy Baines had asked a question about how do you make them or how do you, do you perfect them or whatever. And she talks to her in there about the ratio that she uses. So just throw that out there. Let's see. So let me 
go through here and see if I can see. Ooh, that looked good. Yum. All right. Looking for biscuits. Look at all this delicious food. This makes me so hungry, and I'm trying to not eat right now. Thanks a lot, y'all. Is this it here, these biscuits? Yes. Dibby biscuits. Today, all right, let's take a look. Everybody likes biscuits, huh? For biscuit freaks. So we've got low fat sour creams, no problem. Sprite Zero, Carb Quick, Fiber Gourmet Flour, Ghee. Okay, I didn't realize that. So this should be fine. If you take the Fiber Gourmet Flour out and add Fiber Wise, because you've got the Carb Quick Flour. The carb quick flour is going to moisten it up because of the fat that's in carb quick. Carb quick's fatty. So, yes, you could absolutely replace the fiber gourmet with the fiber wise. Absolutely. That's a one to one. Lisa, if you have time, we might want to mention that. You can replace the fiber gourmet flour with fiber wise and get a cleaner biscuit. So, yep, no problem there. So just forget what I said. I should have pulled the recipe up. There's several biscuit recipes. For this one, it's not going to be an issue because of the sour cream and the carb quick to replace the fiber gourmet flour. Won't be an issue at all. They'll still taste the same. I was worried if it was the only flour. I made some fiber-wise biscuits with just fiber-wise flour, and they were really dried out. Anybody else? I tried to make some quick drop biscuits with it, and they were really dried out. But with that recipe, you've got carb quick and the sour cream that's going to moisten it. Anybody else? Questions, comments, concerns, anything that you'd like to go over before we go today? I hope you enjoyed the class. Don't forget to take your peak performance. May what? I hog the stage oh. for three seconds more? Yeah, please. Uh, can we talk about zip in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can I have, I'm craving peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Can I have peanut butter on a tortilla and use the zip slim and still get moderate results you get great results yeah perfect yeah you sure can long long as, be long as you're watching your total daily eating episodes oh yeah well y'all be watching for that picture because it's happening soon awesome <laughs> yep that peanut butter will help shut down appetite too travis i have a question uh when she posted that out i got to thinking about it um, I've never spoke to a nutritionist on why is it that our brains, I mean, seriously get to craving peanut butter and beans. Those are two things that I'm telling you every now and then I just cannot quit processing. Like I need a bowl of beans. I need a bowl of beans or peanut butter. Can't get enough of it. Interesting. We'd have to probably look that up. Um, I, I don't really know um, if it's, if it's your physical need. I don't know. We'll crave salty things when our bodies are low on iodine. Um, I don't know when it comes to peanut butter or beans. In fact, beans are high in oxalates, so they can cause autoimmune disorders if you eat too many beans. Uh, but they're good for you. They have nutritive value. I don't know. We have to look up the micronutrition that's in beans and peanut butter, find the overlap, and then um, makes just make some some guesses there. I, I don't know. I love peanut butter. I crave peanut butter too. Usually for me, it's because of the fats in it. The fats just help with satiation, but beans are low in fat. So there isn't any common denominator there. And the weirdest thing, I'm craving peanut butter and I probably haven't had peanut butter in, oh, I don't know, 
five years. And you're like, why? Why now? You know. Yeah. So, I don't, great I, question, Cheryl. Yeah. Well, well it's to... been a while. I've been taking the peak performance faithfully for the last, uh, I think, what, four months or, yeah, four months since January. And I haven't craved beans anymore. I love peanut butter. So um, if I know I need to put something in there to take that packet of medicine, because it will make me a little nauseated. And if I don't have enough, like a protein shake or something, I'll take me a spoon of peanut butter and uh, eat that. But I just kind of wondered with what your comment about craving peanut butter, it made me think about when I used to do that with the beans. Yeah. Pe peanut butter, you know, it is a superfood because you've got all these if you don't get hydrogenated peanut butter, you've got healthy fats, you you got ample protein. It's it's pretty good, low carbohydrate, um, pretty nutritional. It's just high in calories. So you have to be careful with the calories, your portion. But that's interesting. We'll look into that. I've never asked, even though I know pregnant women, I always say they crave peanut butter. There's got to be something there. But uh, I don't know. It's not Cindy. <laughs> I've never been pregnant, so <laughs> seems like pickles and peanut butter is a thing for some reason. Anybody else? Okay, all in all, things improving with y'all. We're doing good. Learning, getting better. All right, I hope I didn't miss anything. Good to have you in the members only group today. Good to have you in the Zoom room. We recorded this. We'll put it in the library for our partners and for Faithfully Fit members. Lisa, we appreciate you. Uh, feel free to support our little shibby shop. Uh, we, we need your help. We really do. We need, need partners. Hope that y'all keep praying that people's hearts will be turned towards us and we can get the, the partners that we need. All right, y'all, I'll, I'll close us out in a word of prayer. Does one of y'all feel like closing us out in prayer? Anybody? I'll pray for everyone. I'm sitting down here at the lake. I'd be happy to do that. Awesome. Thank you, Cheryl. You're welcome. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I uh, come to you very humbly this morning, Lord, and I just thank you for what a privilege it is to be in this group and with these people. Father, I ask that your hand continue to lift up our leader, our founder, and uh, give him strength, Lord, to keep going. Uh, give him mental clarity to do the things that he needs to do, making his list, making sure he takes care of his personal life and this professional life, as well as that um, needed resources for his provision. Lord, I ask for your protection upon this uh, program for all of us, Lord, that the uh, provision does come in uh, to keep it going, help stir the hearts and minds of all of those who are a part of it to somehow contribute uh, to be a part of the bigger picture of saving lives in the future. Lord, it's a beautiful day across uh, our nation, and I ask, Lord, that uh, for those of us who are present and aware that we would look up and give thanks to you on this day for all things. I, uh, I just cannot say enough, Lord, how grateful I am for all of these people as we come together, lifting each other up and encouraging one another in our walk, our journey into better health so we can better serve you in all that we do. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory in all things, and we intend to make this a perfect blessed Saturday. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, y'all. Have a beautiful Saturday, and we look forward to connecting soon. Bye.